chapter 16. Oh, wait. oh, things happening. Clash on Big Bridge. So Big Bridge. Oh, it's who could it be? Right? <laughs> My first colossal crossing. This is going to be colossal crossum. Now I'm getting the hype. I mean, is there any character in Final Fantasy that crosses over and occasionally fights on bridges? <laughs> and someone who perhaps may have a theme literally called Clash on the Big Bridge. Always go in. <laughs> it's probably I, I've seen bigger bridges. Could could have been bigger. Clash on the medium sized bridge. That would be appropriate for Gilgamesh. I mean, oops, Actually, no, I now that I think about it, this, this might be the biggest bridge in Final. No, there's the one in Eight that, like, there's a city on. It's but this one is like still pretty planet. darn. Yeah. Th this dungeon, I'll admit, is probably the the weakest part of this game, except as like a weird joke. Although at the top, it does like that weird sort of Mobius French surrealism design. Yeah, there's some art design already on display here. But the bottom of it. Eh. <laughs> At the bottom of the bridge. Yeah. This actually does recall to me the Final Fantasy V big bridge. I mean, at least there's that. I feel like we've had a couple of dungeons so far that are... Meant they're to very places. vague in what they're kind of uh, trying to... It's like, we did a volcano. You have to admire it. You remember gold? Something like this. Yeah. Remember? <laughs> there's lava. I feel like it's always a losing proposition to try to get people to recall it. <laughs> the name is you remember the oh. My job is Eiko, you are already a Funko Pop. You've come here to cross it, right? <laughs> yeah. So, you were saying that big okay, bridge is man-made. Okay, this is what you were talking about. There is, I would pay but literal like, money for Eiko and Rydia to hang name. out and compare it's horrible childhoods. What? They've got a lot to discuss, and we don't get to see that. But, like, Eiko doesn't even get to talk to the FF9 character we just saw five minutes ago. <laughs> it just feels weird. Dude, eh. this thing is alive? Holy schlep! And that's why a summoner I try to remember, once you unlock the ability to, like, appear as one of the Final Fantasy characters that you got the game to play as, um... Can you only do it as one at a time, or am I remembering wrong? Yeah, no, I think it's one at a time. I'll, I'll do it with the, the next battle. I think I can juggle in that. And it's so sick that it's worthless. Right, that's the thing, is that you're not allowed to use your monsters when you are posing as somebody. So it's kind of like... Like, you have to, like, shut off the entire game of the battle system. Right, it'd be like if you were playing Pokemon and you just traded your Pokemon for the punch Nobody command. Remembers they're so caught up in the but if you turn, <laughs> if you put on the punch they're command, you look like, I don't know. I'm trying to think of, like, an appropriate joke here. Oh, that's <laughs> Jesse funny. and James? <laughs> did tell us about the they're in the yellow version, though. So <laughs> the work. You're the they're definitely in Pokemon. I don't think we go into Pokemon more. Maybe I shouldn't let you use the bridge. <laughs> oh no. I'm just cool. looking forward to punching you. Me and Raider are totally going to wreak the right future. Listen, it deserves it. Sure there. are. Rude boy. Huh? <laughs> Rude boy. The entire point of Smash Brothers is to punch you too. Well, it's That's not why they have to bring him back. You. The prophecy's <laughs> about you, Took not me, off. right? Go on, you can cross. <laughs> Brawl, like pointless game. The <laughs> Duly noted. The only winning move is So is there some special the trick to getting to the tippity top of Alexander? Just get on. I'll handle the wake-up call. Also on a side note, the, the bridge is going to be Alexander, Alexander and we're bringing out sleeper. Eco so and not Dagger. Step in and sort of get things going. Yeah, that's now, odd. Off you go. She was kind of the one with like an emotional card to deal with Alexander. Yeah, not like she was the princess of Alexandria or anything. Oh, that really... Like that scene that kind of knocked my socks off when the game was new, where it's just like Alexander going nuts, waiting to like we had a disc three. That sounds right. No, it's yeah, yeah. Midpoint of disc three, I think. It's like the oh, end of no, disc three. I think it's like actually the... the end of the beginning of disc three, because then the yeah. end of disc three is, is all going to Terra. Yeah, the Terra, and then it Darling. might have been the end of disc two, but then I thought the end of disc two was Ifatrice so, or Ilfa. Is it Leafa, Ilfa, or? I could Eva. not tell what the font uh, I never knew. Now, the tree. Somebody check yeah, the big Facts. Tree. <laughs> oh, I don't want to see the debate on game facts about what's correct. Well, I was just thinking it'd be in plain text, so it'd be easier to read. 
I wouldn't so trust anyone you know. to have transcribed it properly. <laughs> well, there is that. Go to play online to find out. Right. Ready when you are. This is gonna be fun. Thanks, Echo. That, that makes me sad. <laughs> Everyone who had that guy shares the same. Every story. time I get reminded of the Final Fantasy IX strategy guide, I get sad. Like I, like it is a hurt that I feel like I was ripped off 20 years ago, and I'm never going to forget it. Yeah. I, I, I'll never get over that they were just trying to throw the cards play, play online as something people were going to have to use, and they immediately abandoned it after Epic 11. Wow, those are some really uncanny looking faces. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that was actually quite nice. I you're over there. I suppose you want to cross the bridge too? <laughs> ah, here Sometimes. we go. The game was cute. No. My business is here with It's certainly you. Not, like, not lacking for, like, art direction. So this, this, this dude's, uh, this dude's a... Yeah! Think about yeah, stuff all. Right. Oh, hey, Fenrir. Look upon me now. Am I truly your enemy? Uh, also, I'm trying to think, but I want to say that Eco maybe had a different summons that was more important to her. But what I do wish. I know? I, 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 I will say that is the one that she comes with, yeah. Yeah, like that's the one that she starts with. Also, she only has Are four summons for some reason. You mean uh, That always felt weird. <laughs> Well, they, they kind of made a big deal about, like, Dagger had, like, standards, and Eco kind of had the... Has, like, like, weird ones. Yeah, exactly. But it still felt odd that they could only come up with four. <laughs> yeah. It was probably time. Has anybody here actually read the Final Fantasy IX art book? Oh. Oh, oh, we, nope. oh, yeah, I had that as a kid. There you go. I mean, there, there's here, I stuff in there that if memory serves, and they talk about, like, we had this idea, us. but this got cut. We had this idea, but this got cut. Oh, we did, yeah. <laughs> and... I, I seem to remember my art book had, like, no text, so maybe I had, like, a crappy, cheap art oh, book. Uh, <laughs> right, I would love to have read, like, design notes and stuff. That would be great. I feel like you could probably find those in, like, the more recent attempts to sort of bring over some of the Ultimania material. Why did hmm. they stop? Because I know they've done, like, I know that, like, the PlayStation ones are all, like, put together into one big hardbound book of, like, three, four hundred pages, so. Yeah, I think it's a hardbound one is what I think I'm recalling, because it was a more recent read. But apparently, like, the final boss battle was supposed to be about 10,000 times more relevant, but they couldn't figure out how to make it work. I mean, like, that's... Whenever you look too hard into, like, game development, you end up looking at, like, games don't get finished. They just <laughs> sort of, like, companies have to, like, companies and directors have to collectively decide when to stop making more. Yeah. And, like, is. it's well, just one this, of those, like... In this case, it seems like the idea they had was that it would be Kuja facing his own death and rejecting it and not being able to deal with it. And it would create its own like Final Fantasy VI Kepka Tower, wherein mm. it was like the three interpretations of death. See, look, I'm lightning right now. That sounds really, really complicated. Totally exactly, and they they completely lost. And also, the entire concept of it would be that Kuju would be dead going into it. So, like that was difficult to make emotionally satisfying. When you like say the, the three interpretations of death, do you mean like like the uh, oblivion, peace, or like a, apparently, hell? Or... Apparently, what was the plan was Hades was going to be the lowest level, which he wound up being one of those hidden bosses. Yeah, he's just like a bonus boss. And oh. appar apparently, one of the versions of the Grim Reaper that appears as part of one of the attacks, like I think the Grim Reaper that you see not when you use death, but when you use countdown. That was going to be the middle phase, and then hmm. what actually wound up being the final boss was like the top of it, which was the whatever it's called, the you know that thing. <laughs> I, I forget. It's like Necrozma or something. Yeah, Necro whatever, <laughs> Necrozama. I remember it's like one of my one of my favorite things I've ever heard used to describe game development was a uh, so quote from Akitoshi Kawazu uh, after 
Saga, Scarlet Grace, Ambitions was announced. Someone like on Twitter just started yelling at him. Uh, like, I, this was also like one of those, like, oh, it turns out that this kind of asshole isn't exclusive to English speakers because it's just some Japanese fan yelling at him, like, oh, if you were just gonna make the fin if, like, why didn't you just finish the game before you release it? And he's like, this game isn't finished. Nothing I've ever made is finished. <laughs> this is just more in it. Like, I will probably never finish a game. There will always be more I wish I could have done. <laughs> That's almost inspiring. <laughs> I, I like Kawazu's play. Like, if you ever feel like sitting down and, like, going through some studious attempts to uh, work out some uh, Google translation nonsense, uh, mm -hmm. like, the Saga25 Twitter account, which has now been in existence for at least five years, uh, <laughs> is clearly, clearly, like, any time that it's just talking about the game, it's usually just Kawazu tweeting about it. And, like, he actually has a lot of interesting things to say. So... Huh. He's, he's someone who's been with Square developing these things since the beginning, so it's, like, a lot of interesting stuff, so... Yeah, I mean, did he have any input on FF1? Yeah, no, he was a designer on FF1. Okay. And I know he was obviously there from two. <laughs> yeah. Although the the thing that's always funniest to me is that like the Ultima thing in two is still was not him. <laughs> yes, that was just a glitch. It wasn't even a glitch. It was like one of the programmers who was like, oh, you know, like this thing they thought was really powerful back then. Maybe they, you know, maybe they just didn't have a sense of scale on it. Maybe it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and like when. When I always wish I, I had a boss that would let me use excuses that week for just not doing what well, I was doing. It wasn't even that. Like, it was like they told him do it. He did. He wouldn't do it, but he was the one who did the code and it was all an assembly and no one else wanted to sit down and fix it. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Like, when you're, when you're dealing with that kind of stuff, it's like, uh, the programmer kind of has you over a barrel. Oh yeah, because I fought the Flan Princess last time, I can apparently unlock that now. As Fine. A final cute form transformation or something. Final I still remember form one of those for a while. Yeah. Also, I'm very disappointed I do not have any recall of when I'm allowed to upgrade my little Ifrit creature because it looks like it's going to be sticking to its like little loser form for a while. Which is disappointing. This nerd. <laughs> uh, watching each of these things scroll by is a uh... So window into weeks gone by and the strange choices made during the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, back to the bridge. I got distracted because I wanted to see if I could update my cac bar yet, but it's still gained another level. You okay, Rain? A friend of mine used to go to the school way up on a hill. I love his non-existent and it would close down even at the slightest hint of snow. I like that they they identified you'd want to have him walking around with you. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Just wiggling. <laughs> Alrighty, let's go. Come on, bring it. Oh, you know. You got any actual useful abilities for being lightning? It looks like so flourish. Oh, you were talking blonde. This'll do. So yes, you can pretend to be your buddies, and I think this is the, the big revolutionary thing that was included with the, uh... Oh Maxima yeah, with expansion. the Maxima. Exactly. There's a couple more Final Fantasies and child play as them. <laughs> yeah, no. Which, you know, good addition. 
my original playthrough was completely... With Maximo, was just a glimmer of Square Enix's eye, so... New to me. Okay, now, now of course, Cactuar leveled up, so now I can theoretically evolve it or something. I just want to just see what... Make Chrome up there. I, I was about to say, I just want to see what comes next for Mr. Cactuar. It's gonna look like an FF11 Cactuar. Yes! I'm gonna be really upset. Don't worry, it absolutely grows a mustache. Yes! Jumbo Cactuar! Gigantuar. As it's more common modern nomenclature. Forget, I think I, they... I love the Gigantuar versus the Megalon. <laughs> <laughs> I think they they shoved this thing into like FF6 Advance as one of the new Espers. Yes, Sounds yes, right. they did. You could get it, like in Final Fantasy VIII, you could get it after hunting a bunch of them. Yeah, I got all of those, and I remember nothing about the process. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the dirty secret, secret is that Zombie Magic's just never been useful or good or cool. I mean, it's cool. That's all it, all it is in the whole series. It's never been efficient. Yes. I mean, even in Final Fantasy VI, it was very much not cool because it would be like you'd Here's use a it, a unicorn would appear on the screen for three seconds, and then, like, you'd have eight HP restored, and you'd be like, uh, all right. <laughs> Listen, it wasn't until FF7 that we had the technology to do a giant six winged dragon in space coming in and blowing up the Earth. <laughs> And yeah, listen, that was not actually an efficient use of your time or MP, but it looked cool as hell. <laughs> I'm trying to think if I ever used the summons because I had to or because, like, oh, I mean, so you, everybody always talks about the Baham Bahamuts, Bahamuts, I don't know how to pronounce anymore, I hate this game. But everybody <laughs> talks, talks about the dragons. <laughs> and the thing that impressed me most was Titan throwing over the, uh... He picks them up and drops them. Right, like, that was like, you could have never done this on the Super Nintendo. <laughs> it's true, you couldn't. Here's a big polygon. <laughs> uh, Pooch says it's pronounced Baha Man, and now I swear against it because I'm blood. Um... Who oh, let yeah. the Baha Man out? <laughs> Why are you doing this? Why would you do this to me? <laughs> I'm really enjoying, like, what the fast-forward does to the, like, uh, the, uh, Skullcracker on your head's idle animation, and she looks really impatient. <laughs> <laughs> Got somewhere to be! Come on, buddy! Let's speed this up! <laughs> I mean, there's a weird kind of thing wherein I feel like I mean, the meat of a Final Fantasy game is theoretically the dungeons, and I feel like those are kind of not great in this game. Like, they're entirely forgettable. Like, this dungeon is literally a staircase. And, like, okay. But then, like, a lot of the monster designs and what have you are, like, I really want to see this implemented elsewhere. Like, these are... Like, sort of adorable, sort of horrifying, mostly because skulls are included. And it's like... Like, I don't know. I don't know how I feel. Like, I feel like, to, to be fair to this, I don't... I can't think of, like, a Final Fantasy game where I would call the dungeon design the strong suit. Hmm. Yeah, I'm trying like, to think. I really want to refute you, but I, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go! You know, like, you'll get ones that, like, say, FF5, where, like, the advancement system is a strong suit. That's kind of irrespective of the dungeons themselves, which are mostly just sort of a mildly diverting okay. maze. It's, uh, it's, it's, they exist, I feel like, to modulate the pace of the things around them rather than to be the center stage uh, point of interest. Fair. But you definitely spend a lot of time in that. Yeah, like, I, I feel like. Uh, it sticks yeah. out in this one just because, like, there's, like, this one is so segmented between, like, there's a giant, uh, there's, like, a big giant set piece, and then you're set forth into another dungeon that is 
of limited relevance, and there's not really a lot of attempts to marry those two aspects. I would say that for, and especially uh, for the After Years, because there isn't really an advancement system, not, not having played the the, uh, the remake the 3D that has all the weird augment stuff. Oh man, the augment. But like when when they're controlling the party, then like the party that you're stuck with for that dungeon sort of becomes a huge aspect of the dungeon. That's which true. That's true. Go away to make it a little more interesting than when you're just sort of rolling with the same uber gods that you've grinded up. Rolling with the same people, or like having different people, but all of their like skills have been transferred between each other. Yeah. So. Yeah, uh, I would say Seven hey. Remake has unusually strong dungeons as well. Hmm. But I've I think avoided that's... all information about that one, but I believe you. Yeah, I'll try to. <laughs> I'll try to avoid going too deep into it, but just like. Oh no, no, no! It's not about spoilers. I just uh, don't own the, the stuff to uh, play it. So I... uh, well, probably next March, I would imagine. Uh, but. Yeah, like it's one of those ones where like it one of the one of the late game dungeons, the climb to the Shinra building is honestly one of the more interesting dungeons just because it's like it is that visually arresting, but there's also just like the I, I guess because there's a greater element of three D in it, like it's sort of the the, the it, it gives the dungeon a lot more Character that makes it feel more interesting to me, I guess. Right, hmm. let's do this. Here we go. You know, I, I'm gonna say six also does a, a decent job at like you're doing something different or you're like splitting up the party or it's not just go to the end of the dungeon and fight the boss usually. Hmm. But it's also been ages since I played it, so maybe that's not even true. Hmm. Uh, when did I last play that? Like 2016, I think. I'm not the I'm not the hugest six boss, so I can't speak too well to it. Get out! I'm sorry, I get this a lot. I get this a lot, a lot. <laughs> I get this a lot. I'm picturing you being Listen. thrown out of a nightclub and being like, "Yeah, this is normal." <laughs> Listen, I hang out in a lot of spaces where play the adore old school RPGs, and of course, I I adore a lot of them too, but. Six mostly doesn't speak much to me, so I get a lot of get out, sir. <laughs> I'm used to it. I don't think you deserve the title, sir. <laughs> Please get out, hooligan. <laughs> Darken my door no longer. <laughs> Trouble the soul of my mother no more. <laughs> yeah. I call my son off shotgun, Mr. Thou. <laughs> <laughs> But thou must. I don't remember what I'm supposed to do here. <laughs> you just keep friggin' going forever. <laughs> there's definitely, like, it seems like there should be a switch or something, or am I supposed to go backwards? I don't know. Just imagining I guess we're doing this. Come on. this, but if they had decided to really properly open it up to other franchises and what. I would expect to even be here. <laughs> you just want Toe Ball again, we know. <laughs> no, Toe Ball doesn't have. No, you're thinking of Air Guys, God Bless the Ring. <laughs> Which was the first, but not last, uh, canonical crossover between a Tekken uh, character and a Final Fantasy character. <laughs> Let us all contemplate Ken God Hand Machine. <laughs> Why is he God Hand? He has a gun. That's yeah, sure. <laughs> he's, not, he's not going to be swapped for Barrett because he's not in this game, we swear. <laughs> Barrett's not in this game. Vincent is for some reason. He had a gun you know, beloved fan favorite character, Vincent. Listen, in 1997, that was probably a fair. I was about to say, <laughs> I hate to say it, but my God, I, I love Vincent. <laughs> he, he had a claw? I guess we didn't have a lot of health representation in the 90s. <laughs> yeah, there's that. <laughs> oh my gosh, Do you, t talking of goth representation in the 90s, you, you know the film The Crow where Brandon Lee passed away on set because yeah. they were being very dangerous? Yeah. Was, yeah. So apparently they also, just on the edge of the uh, the set, they had like a bunch of fake power lines. What? Made out of like rope. Just like as part of the, the like dystopian city. Thing, but 
Some of them were just actual power lines, and that was where they decided to, to line up all these fake power lines. <laughs> and and I, 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 the way it was described to me, and I, I want to clarify before I, I use this word that this gentleman survived, uh, received a cash settlement, did not receive a big enough cash settlement, because apparently what happened was uh, not realizing most of the, or half of the wires were live, um, in the word of the PA I spoke to, exploded. Oh. And it's... And also, do, do you know what set they were using for this dystopian cityscape in the Crow movie? Somehow we get more curves. It was, a, it was, a, oh yeah, it was a cement factory in North Carolina where they'd, the previous summer, set up a dystopian cityscape for the film Super Mario Brothers the movie. <laughs> oh, man, that's my favorite bad movie. Even yeah, more curves. It's great. That film is like just awful in like a really like fascinating fashion because like, if, there are so many ideas in it, and they're all wrong, but they're all... None of them is boring. <laughs> yes. I have to agree with that entirely. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's like, oh, Mario can jump. Let's Obviously, he has super mega shoes that he stole <laughs> super from boots a female bouncer, I think was the deal. <laughs> yeah, like some... Bouncer? I don't remember why this happened. <laughs> I, I want to say I've been helping the kind gentleman at the Super Mario Brothers movie archival project uh, scan in a lot of stuff because I'm like closer to it and I'm the only person they know in LA with a scanner. Um, <laughs> I don't know why that's funny to me. <laughs> well, none, none of them are in LA. They're all like English people. <laughs> um, and so they've 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 been having me go through all of this like production material, photographs and and concept art, and scan it for their website. And I want to say the Thwomp Stompers are pretty cool. <laughs> That's what they're called. Oh man! They had, they had like nine designs for the um the what ended up just being the uh, the super scope gun. The yeah, the devolution oh, yeah. ray or whatever it is. <laughs> and like all the. All the I just have a bunch of prints currently. I have to send them back at some point um, of the different gun designs that they worked through, and they're all great. I, I just want you all to know that. I have an entirely undue love of like the weird line delivery of Dennis Hopper saying, Monkey! <laughs> he likes monkeys! He's so happy! Monkey! <laughs> Why am I remembering that exact scene now? <laughs> <laughs> it's a very memorable film. I feel like I haven't seen that in years, and here it is in my brain. Thank you. <laughs> I feel like I was, like, traumatized as a child when I saw Toad D evolved into a dinosaur. Uh, a lot of, lot, of, lot of imagery of that in my brain. Also, at the end, like, oh, they gave, they gave the Toad Goomba... Also, all the Goombas are l large dinosaurs in gigantic suits. And they gave the Toad Goomba a harmonica. We're not going to fix it, but we are going to give him a harmonica. He's just a Goomba forever. You know? Now, I want to be clear, having Mojo Nixon running around your city uh, isn't isn't a responsible choice at the best of times. Never been. Absolutely never been. <laughs> Can somebody look at a fact and tell me which direction I'm supposed to be going right now? I could, but this is much funnier. <laughs> I, I know one of them you have to, like, use a, a monster with, like, a jump power. Come on. But oh, I could have sworn there's, like, a cutscene that shows you that. I wouldn't want to think less of you. I just know that I'm, like, obliterating monsters as they appear. It's like, you could imprison me in a, like, no. <laughs> I'm summoning a tidal wave and you're going away forever. This is such a weird game, because, like, all the mobile games sort of understand that they have only got a couple of really iconic monsters, and it's the characters that, like, a player wants to collect, whereas this one is yeah. just like, oh, yeah, well, everyone loves Moo. <laughs> this wasn't even... They were, they were too cowardly to bring in the ragtime mouse and traumatize a new generation oh. of children. <laughs> I'm gonna bring up the ragtime mouse every single episode. <laughs> Come to think of it, actually, ragtime mouse would really be effective Dude, in this game Let's because this it could show up and actually have Final Fantasy trivia. 
Ooh. Yeah, and I can tell you that, like, I would feel, like, the number one thing a video game should do is make you feel good or make you feel sad. And I would feel very good if it shows up and it's like, here's some obscure facts about Final Fantasy IV, and I'm like, I know this. You know, I'll tell you what, I, I would life. feel very sad if it came up and asked me a bunch of Final Fantasy trivia and I knew all of it. <laughs> I'd be like, oh yeah, I've done this with my life. <laughs> I've been training my whole life for this. <laughs> See, you're an optimist. That's where we're different. <laughs> like, I know, some point in my life, I will have to, like, save someone's life by knowing exactly what happens in Final Fantasy V. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I... Oh, sorry. Someday there'll be a... There'll be... A doctorate thesis I can put forward, uh, comparatively analyzing the development cycles of Final Fantasy games, and I'll be ready. You know, I'll, I'll tell you what. I, I think you guys are setting your your expectations a little low because I remember my dad, who loved uh, the first three Monkey Island games, and I remember when I was thirteen, my dad was he was flying a plane because my my dad was a pilot, and um, good. <laughs> And his his plane was hijacked by a man named uh, D.B. Cooper. And he he was holding a gun to my dad's head, and he said, um, take this plane to Cuba, and I'm gonna shoot you, or else tell me uh, how you solve the puzzle in, in uh, the third island on uh, the Curse of Monkey Island. Original dad, or Mega dad, Monkey? I don't even remember. <laughs> you know, I, I wasn't there. We can't. Don't don't press me for details about my family trauma. I'm so okay? sorry for for making the trauma. Are are you doubting me? How dare you? I would, def, I would never do that. How dare you? So like I've, I've always thought, you know, just in case DB Cooper strikes again, you know, I better study these things. <laughs> I have had unrelated thought in my head since uh, going back 10, 15 minutes to Vincent Goth discussion. Uh, I have had the thought process of like, I kind of wish they'd revisit the original idea they had for his character in, at some stage, where it was just like, what if we just put Fox Mulder in? <laughs> no changes. <laughs> just do it. I mean, Just I, like I a definitely weird like paranormal I like the concept of somebody in a Final Fantasy game being like, you know, there are minotaurs walking around in the woods. What's up with that? <laughs> Let's investigate this. Yeah, it's like, let's look into the fact that there are demons that live five feet out of town, and we seem to be okay with this. And they drop a, a very particular amount of gold every time you kill one. <laughs> Is this a physical property? What are they using this the gold a, for? Is this a high level of galactic cosmic radiation? <laughs> and I also like I the do... idea of having the Fox Mulder character, Vincent, like, literally everybody else in the party is like, just roll with it and don't worry about it. <laughs> Everyone immediately sick of him questioning <laughs> yes. this. It's like, why did we just fight Ibs? Don't worry about it. Right. Sid just like wiggling back and forth yelling at him. <laughs> well, legitimately, that wouldn't be any change in the character. <laughs> it's true, but he'd be yelling more specifically at Fox Mulder Vincent. Fair enough. There. There's like just. Okay. After you. <laughs> There's just this weird, like, ambition in like how they wanted these hidden characters to work, because like, Yuffie's original, like, design idea was frankly like the kind of idea that would never work at any point because it's just like <laughs> there, the, supposedly the original idea was there would be like signs up strewn throughout the game that would all give conflicting descriptions of her and uh, then when you found her she would match whatever version you would last see oh that's fun it would make fan artists go crazy Oh yeah, there would be there would be wars in constant motion about like which Yuffie design was correct. 
but it would have been a cute idea. But it also would have been very difficult to implement and not really worth the time. So I understand. And I was about to say it would have completely forked every sequel ever. <laughs> oh yeah, no, they would have had to just pick one. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm I'm doing the I'm I'm doing the due diligence. I'm gonna look for an FAQ and see if I can decode what you've done. Probably have to look out. Coward. <laughs> I, I, I remember one that he had longer while I was playing this. That hand guy is great. <laughs> yeah, we picked up a hand earlier. This game always seems to disagree with me about uh, which monsters like are cool enough that you should have to use them at all times. <laughs> I, mean, no. I, still, I really like our squirrel riding a skull because that is exactly what it is. <laughs> I don't have any high tap topple abilities. Well, I found a map. This map is profoundly useless. <laughs> I'll never guess how many straight lines are involved. I, I hope, like, still in 2016, people were, like, drawing out the Lasky maps out of slashes and dashes. No, not in this case. Uh... We have lost that technology. Uh, GameFAQ post. I'm stuck on the bridge. That wasn't so bad. Got to the second one. There's no way to make the platform move. Oh, do, do you have access to one of those doors? Maybe you're just meant to go back to the base and talk to someone there. It's possible. <laughs> the wet, red squares on the right side of the second screen or dips and roots at the sun. That's where I don't know what that means. <laughs> Red square. I'm seeing a lot of red here. Anytime I think about this game, I see red. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah. Like, I feel like this isn't supposed to be complicated, but I'm probably just missing something obvious. This is one of the reasons I don't like random battles, because it's like, I'm trying to think here, guys. Every three seconds, my attention is forcibly dragged away. You know, I, I'll agree with you that conceptually I, it, it's very obnoxious and makes the game like a tangibly worse thing, but then also there are games where they'll turn off the random encounters in like puzzle rooms. And That's that always, for some reason that always bugs me, even though like I know it's an objectively good thing to do. <laughs> I always it's like I should be annoyed no matter what. Maybe I'm just a crank. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm happy, y'all. I'm never oh. happy. Oh. Okay, take two. Let me look at a bridge. It's gotta be something I'm supposed to press. Something. Clash against the big bridge. Red. Little something's going on here. Oh wait, wait! Oh, I'm somehow. Oh. Like, how did this not trigger the scene before? I walked all here. over this air. I'll show you. I love event flags. <laughs> Thanks, Chocobo, for someone far- Oh, it's farts! <laughs> <laughs> or butts. Now Whichever you prefer. It's definitely butts. It's true. Bops it. Farts. <laughs> Guts. I'm trying to remember what I last named him in a fart job yesterday. Thank you for the demonstration. Yeah, thanks. I think I was being particularly no crude. I think I called them asses. And this <laughs> is my partner, Boko. Okay, so tell me if I'm the only one who does this. When I'm playing a game... Okay, granted, I am usually the Final Fantasy 
like intended oh, hey. audience as I've like heard. you know there's some I'm intended audience for Slogdale but like strangers. generally when I'm first wait, playing wait, a game I name you, the character after myself huh? no we didn't but even then by the time the game is over then I'm identifying oh, them by well, their whatever keep looking for him. like parts or like that you know they're right. assigned by the end, of, by the end of the game you just, they've you usually got enough development you can no longer project upon them yes exactly I know right Maybe but, like, definitely, a like, the first then time I played... Certainly, as long as they would yeah, let me do that, that, I would do that the first you? time through well, and never great. again. <laughs> yeah. I want to say there was a cloud named Bob, there was up? Butts named Bob. Yes, that's right. Okay. Goggle Butts. Tag along. <laughs> Goggle <laughs> Butts. Barrier, I say. <laughs> yeah, I loved how, like... They tried to preserve that in FFN, like everything about FFN's writing makes it clear that that was a mistake. How you doing, Star Bits Blitz okay, player? <laughs> How are- oh, it's you! <laughs> hey, you! And then FFN 2 also has to never reference Titus as a name. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the final, final scene of that where it's like, I'm so glad you are back. <laughs> I love how, like, Kingdom Hearts just immediately cuts that knot. It's just like, whatever, it's Titus. It's Titus. <laughs> Excuse me, it's Titus. <laughs> it's Titus until it's Kingdom Hearts 2, at which point it becomes Titus. I literally Square played Kingdom Hearts 1 man. for the first time with one of my friends who had also played Final Fantasy X with me, and we were both so, so excited about the game. And, like, I still remember three seconds in being like, Titus, have we been saying this wrong the entire time? <laughs> <laughs> and the answer is yes, but Square bowed to the pressure. <laughs> I do appreciate, like, looking up uh, information about Kingdom Hearts pre-release and, like, how they apparently, for some reason, they actually had a lot of internal debate about which Final Fantasy characters to throw in. <laughs> like, uh, originally the uh, Destiny Islands trio was Tita, Selfie, and Irvine. Which was... Huh. Slightly different, and then I guess they decided that the the sort of trio roles they wanted to give them fit better with Titus and Waka. I'm not quite sure what the thought process was, but that ended up being who they went with. Wait, which one? Selfie and who was originally? I mean, Irvine, but who was the other one? Uh, Titus, Selfie, and Irvine. Like, okay. Was, Irvine got swapped out for Waka. Because I want to say Waka <laughs> makes the most sense because his, his weapon is just like a beach ball. Yeah, I think there was probably some concern about, like, having you start off fighting an enemy that used a projectile that was not something you would actually fight very often. This might be yeah. A gun? I was about to say, like, a water gun? Back when I, was a kid, I would imagine it would have been, like, a toy gun or, like, a pop gun or something, but it was still one of those things that was, like, probably seems like, this is kind of weird. Oh, it doesn't quite work. By the way, Bart, you wouldn't happen to be a... Yeah, you gotta figure... I mean, I would be genuinely curious. There, there are two production staffs that I would love to speak to, assuming they like didn't have their corporate or overlords. If you could just like them. talk to them, can. Yeah, like there is the original production of Kingdom Hearts because I really want to know exactly why the decisions were made, and not just have the answer be. Like, you know, well, we thought in a very important partnership. Like, it was just like, I wanted somebody to say, well, I really I'm like the Aladdin. Might be out in the open. I'm curious, like, what you're thinking. It, yeah, it, like, I mean, just, like, did you include Titus because you wanted Titus? Or um, was it because... Because he was the most recent protagonist. Exactly, or... like, that kind of stuff. And, and I'm sure, like, a legitimate interview, like most designers would never be like, well, just because cor corporate no overlord tell me. But then yeah, the other it's... one that I would love to see an interview with, you know, which you might actually get legitimate answers from them, I would There's love Tokobos to interview whoever first had to localize Pokemon. Before mm. Pokemon oh, yeah. became huge and like inevitably had a team of thousands figuring out whether or not they were allowed to name something Medicam or whatever. But just somebody who looked at, like, Jinx and was like, this is Jinx. <laughs> there's some there's some interesting stuff floating around Pokemon, because, like, you got some pre-release stuff that has Pokemon with different names or, like, right, super exactly. non-final I love the, the ones that are, like, 
uh, coughing and wheezing yeah. super don't have final names in some of those early things, so they're la labeled like uh, NY yeah, and LA. LA and New York. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, I actually, that was me. Uh, I was the one who they assigned to do the original translations. And I, I really, you know, I, I think I did, had a big hand in the success of the series, uh, you know, in, in its early days. And I, I think it's a real shame that they've sort of cut me out of the history <laughs> of the franchise. Because I, well, I remember what it actually was. A lot of people asked me where I, I thought up the name uh, Pikachu. <laughs> and what it is, is there, there was this kid in my high school um, named Bob Pikachu. Yeah. And... What he was, he was he, real, real oddball. He was in uh, uh, the Naval ROTC, uh, you know, the Junior Officer Training Corps, whatever. Um, and, but he, they didn't, he didn't really fit in anywhere. He, he sort of joined there trying to fit in. You, you, you know, you, you try to establish yourself yeah, as a man in high school, adolescence, you know. Um, uh, but people would still bully him even when he was in, in the uniform, which you think would intimidate them a little. Uh, and and he'd, he'd get so mad that he'd just... He'd rub his hands on his, his, you know, this polyester static cling, and he'd zap them. <laughs> and his name was Bob Pikachu. And and I thought, you know, when I saw the character of Pikachu, I thought, that is just Bob. That is just Bob. But it turned out they couldn't copyright the name Bob. So they said, can you think of any other name? Well. <laughs> and you know what? I can't believe Goggle Pop ruined this one. It's you know it's, it's such a huge, it's such a huge project, you know. And I you know they they had me working up until um, the most recent game actually, uh, and, and you know like uh, a lot of people ask me where I thought of the name um, a Appleton for the the apple pie dragon, which is a wonderful Pokemon. You know I saw it. And I thought that reminds me of my friend John Appleton, who you know he loved apple pie and he he ate so much apple pie that he was always covered with pie crust. Just and I thought, let's you know, it, it wasn't because the Pokemon looked like an apple pie; it was because he looked like my friend uh, John Appleton, who and himself John was already looked taken. like a pie. It, it was like a two degree. Oh well, John. Yeah, we use John in the third generation. <laughs> That's my favorite. Ghost it's a good. Type. It's a good generation. Good type. Ghost type. Ghost type. <laughs> oh. You know, I, I was I was having coffee Watch the other day with my, with my auntie, uh, my auntie um, Miltank. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell you what, that lady had to change her shirt like five. Oh God. I'm, I'm going to ban myself. I'm yeah, sorry. We're, we're done I'm, with that now. That, that just blasted out of my brain when I was thinking of beforehand. We need to get that mirage out of the way. Oh, in abstract. <laughs> uh, so we introduced a brief jumping Dude, action here in the game good. for probably will appear like exactly one time. <laughs> Probably for the best. I'm trying to think, where are some other, like, random... Like, Final Fantasy is always great for introducing a random minigame that is never seen again, but that is entirely too complicated. I mean, most of FF10's minigames, I would say. Oh, God. Can, can we never address the fact that Blitzball is completely absurd. I wasn't even thinking of Blitzball. I was thinking of, like, the Chocobo race in that. Oh, God. Like, there I remember... are so many games in Final Fantasy IX that they introduce that are only available for, like, the, the span between two cutscenes, and then you can like never do them again. Steps. Yeah, there's, like, racing a hippo boy that you, you oh, have yeah. to do oh, yeah, like, hippo. times to unlock a thing, yeah. Or jump roping. Yeah. Oh, don't get me started. Jump rope. <laughs> but like FF10, like I remember, like the last time that I played it, which was probably the beta release of all things. But I remember playing that and do and deciding I'm gonna get these celestial weapons. That was a tremendous mistake. Hey, listen. Oh sis. no. But you know that expression. Like I got to the, I, I decided that the one that I hated the most kind of was the Chocobo race. race in that one. Because I mean, like to get the bridge to successfully to win the Chocobo race and get the thing, you have to get a time of less than zero seconds. Make it stop. And like, that's, I mean, on its face, that's absurd. But also, 
the the balloons that subtract time are complete like they have a random pattern the birds that add time also have a random pattern and the controls are awful and so like i started like keeping track of okay how close am i this time and like it had no correlation with how many times i've done it or how much i have learned quote unquote how to play this awful mini game it was just like one time i would get like oh you finished in a total of one second and then like the next time you finished in 45 seconds nice job Jack. <laughs> and it just it had nothing to do with there was never a point where i was actually getting better at it every other mini game like it, it could suck but i would at least i would get better at doing it and that one was just like nope it's just whatever happens will happen it's like flipping okay. it's like rolling a d100 with only one like successful outcome but every roll takes like 45 seconds i'm sorry you just reminded it completely unrelated except for one word you said but i have it's to fine. i have to recount for this is for any the children watching which you know obviously there are plenty of children but i hope that no child is watching the d100 <laughs> story i always have to tell my friends and i were giant nerds playing shadow run in college of and course. Two of the characters were in a relationship. And every time that they slept at an inn, it was, well, whatever, a hotel, it was assumed they were having sex. So we rolled a D100 because condoms have a 97% accuracy rating. Oh my god. And literally the first, excuse me, the second time we did it, it rolled a 98. <laughs> well. So that character is pregnant. <laughs> what well, what a what a way to go further. What a way to extend the campaign. <laughs> so, children watching, please understand how statistics work, and sometimes they're not in your favor. Any anything that uh, involves rolling multiple times, you probably don't want to put to chance. <laughs> just just don't trust things that have been put to chance. Don't trust Just things. don't trust things. Yeah, there it's it is. It's true. Okay. I don't trust things, and look where that's got. Okay. So now... This is good, this is right. This is the way it should be. This be the verse. <laughs> they fuck you up, your mom and dad. <laughs> I don't I don't remember the rest of that poem. That is literally all I ever think about, but I I have recounted that on many an occasion. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good poem! <laughs> Yeah, it was actually, for the first time, I think, since quarantine, I was in a bookstore today. Ooh. And I felt Ooh. like... It, this is hard to explain, but I really wanted to come home and tell my fiancé, I'm sorry, but there's a part of me right now that needs to just buy a bunch of books and roll around in them. <laughs> Because just... I feel like that's going to ruin them. <laughs> well, I mean, it's not good for the books, I admit. But th there's a part of me that I almost feel like has been broken since I haven't been able to hang out in a bookstore for literal months. That's uh, understandable. I don't know. It's it's like a brain problem. <laughs> miss bookstores and libraries, yeah. Yeah, no. It's, I... Friend, books. it's not fair. There was time now. Yeah, exactly. It, it's very much that Bridges Meredith episode of the Twilight Zone. I'm enough at last. Alright, so. The party is all together. We've got Lightning riding a giant cactus with a Tom Berry on top, which is the way it should be. Fine. And now it's time to move. 
the come on. Come yes. On, Let's begin. Gigantar is exactly as gigantic as it needs to be. Look at this precious child. <laughs> we grew it from a little cactus. And now here we are. It's the only thing in this world I trust at this stage. <laughs> Abby, you're guessing, but you, you get a vote on this. We've been consistently doing this on Tuesday nights. Are we doing this live stream on election night? Ooh. Um, oh, I, I think we're going to need something to be oh, careful God. about. <laughs> yeah. I, I, hate to, I hate to be pessimistic, but I don't think there's a chance of any good news coming to us for the next, like, 20 years. Seven years. <laughs> 20 years. God. I, I remember the second Bush election and I remember Adult Swim was running an episode of Harvey Birdman over and over again. Oh, wow. That does sound like them at the time. The, the Black Swatch Plaid episode where they, they're making fun of the terror index over and over again. Oh yeah. And I remember just watching election results uh... and going back to, to... <laughs> Birdman no, let's do this happy. instead. What the? Wait yeah, second. that's fair. Is that who you were talking that's, about? That's, that's definitely your reason. Maybe this could be the new Birdman. I don't Who's know. Who's there? Show yourself. I remember the first vote I ever cast. We just had this huge recession. I got to vote for the first time. I voted for Barack Obama, and I thought, oh. You know, and Fukuyama was right. It's the end of history. What? Finally, you you someone's going it? to come in and fix it. How many years and then now? he did not. <laughs> Hang on. But I understand he made a lot of contacts at Netflix, so maybe I should go on to <laughs> politics. Look at me. Tell me what you know. Huh? Nobody asks me that. Think of the I doors you could still have open. <laughs> Think of the doors someone could still own. Right this time. <laughs> I have awaited this day uh, hundred years. Well, that's a lot more well, face sure than I used to say. Yeah, he's yeah. a little bit more animated than I thought. Yeah, I'll say. At least I want to appropriately finding him to be the latest fun copa. You no can pull out a big buster sword that's a fake on it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, talking of, uh, uh what, what, what are those called, uh, the, the, the Ruma heads. How old does this is, have to this be? is among people, worldly years? enough, that, like that it might be oh, worth my on. telling this story, because it baffled me for years. Exactly. I've never spoken to anyone who There's even knows called, enough like, about Daruma dolls like to be able to help me to solve this puzzle, all right? So Daruma dolls, they're a little scary guy head, kind of like Gilgamesh's head. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, based on a, a religious oh, figure whose story I do not feel confident in recounting. And um, uh, what you do is uh, on New Year's, you're meant to draw in on his, I think it's left eye, because his eyes are just like white circles, like it'll give him a square. And you draw in an eye on one eye, and you make a wish. And then when your wish comes true, you fill in the other eye. And I, I guess the idea is sort of like, oh, he's helping you out, like, and, and that's how you repay him by giving him, giving him eyes. Yeah. Um, and my dad brought one back for me when he went to Tokyo on a business trip when I was like five. And like, like he just brought back, he brought back like a, like one book I, I adore was like a Peanuts uh, comic strip collection where they changed, like they re-lettered the actual words uh, in, um, I think Katakana, one of one of the character sets. I, I don't remember. Mm -hmm. um, but but then they they then included the English translations like in in typewritten text on the side of the panels. So it was like it was shaped like a like a like a paperback novel, and and all the panels were sort of like diagonally arranged down the down the page. Mm. And it, it's just a strange possession that I I'm glad I own somewhere. Um, but this this doll that my dad brought back. Uh, when I looked at it, like years later, I like was I heard like oh that that's what that was. You fill in the one eye, you make a wish. You fill in the other eye, and the wish comes true. And I looked at the one in my room, and someone had gone to town with it with a pen and done done one eye on it at some point. And I it wasn't me. 
and it wasn't my brother. And I asked my dad if he'd ever heard any of that stuff about you make a wish you fill in a, a, an eye, and he said he'd never heard of it either. So the only theory I can figure out is that my dad did not in fact buy that at a little gift shop for us. He just stole it from some kid. Which <laughs> <laughs> now never came true. <laughs> There's a, there's a certain artistry to the, to the like, story that comes from, like, for sale, one-eyed Dadamon. <laughs> Every one-eyed Dadamon is just a tragic keepsake of a wish unfulfilled. I mean, you don't know if, like... Maybe the wish was just, I really don't want this in my house anymore, and guess what? <laughs> so, oh, so, so the third possibility is my dad was dumpster diving <laughs> while on a business trip in Tokyo. I'm not sure if that's better or worse. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't I supposed to get something for somebody back? Oh, daughter. <laughs> I think I like that image of my dad, to be honest. <laughs> Crap. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, the Cactuar, or excuse me, Gigantar just apparently stomps to attack. No trouble at all. Predictable. Yeah, I, I don't think I'm going to ever be able to swap out Gigantar for anything ever again. That would be silly, too. Yeah. It's a giant dancing cactus. What more do you need? Uh, boxing gloves. No fear getting oh, up yeah. on me like that, <laughs> you cowards! Box! Now we got what? a Digimon going. Next time, it's just you and me. I, I have a very limited uh, selection of things that I'm interested in talking about, and we've seized upon one of them. <laughs> well, I've given you Fine. enough of a beating anyway. Good game! It's Vader, huh? Actually, I'll, I'll, oh, <laughs> goodbye, Gilgamesh. So, uh, who mixed up? I always like the tough guy character who, who pretends he's won even when he's been beaten horribly. Well, at least it's a he's fun... out of our hair, I guess. Wouldn't that be nice? Good archetype. So I guess after the, the basic idea is that after the heavy levels where we got thrown into a dungeon and attacked by the plume knight, they needed something to like add levity. So Gilgamesh was chosen to head up a, See you guys a dungeon that is just a straight line. Yep. Take care. Interesting right. thinking. Don't be a stranger now. Hmm. Spice it up. <laughs> Also, once again, we deal with the situation of Barts is just kind of like, well, my time as a cameo is over. <laughs> Talk to you later. I have to go. My home planet needs <laughs> Yeah. I think I'm going to fight Gilgamesh, then I'm going to leave. Thank you. Goodbye. And this dungeon Please. keeps going. Hooray. You know, in, in yeah. defense of that, Bart's whole plot, like, he, he just sort of, he was just vibing that whole game. He just... <laughs> Just wandered over. Unless he wanted to bring in his dad and the previous Warriors of the Dawn, well, he's got nothing. Oh, come on, live a little. I mean, once again, no. you could. Well, I guess we had Ferris earlier, but, like, you know, some of his buddies could help out. I don't even know what a Cryo Funko Pop looks like. It's already a Funko Pop. <laughs> it's just a head. Is it Cryo? Because oh. I've, I've always gone with Krill. I always did an impression of uh, the bishop from Father's Head and said, Cray! Not but nightmares. 